Hi everyone, Zoe here. Now for today's video on five mistakes, I'm going to look at making a tool from a film. In this case, the film is the 2000 film Castaway, which starred Tom Hanks. In it, Tom Hanks' character Chuck Noland is stranded on an uninhabited island following a plane crash from Malaysia. And throughout the course of the film, Chuck learns basic survival skills and fabricates tools and equipment with packages that wash up on the island. And I'm going to look at making one of those. Now, if you've not seen the movie, watch it. It's a good film. But you'll probably know it from a lot of memes and the sort of cultural osmosis that comes through from Wilson. Wilson's another character in the movie. It's actually a volleyball by the Wilson Sporting Company that Chuck starts befriending as a kind of psychological surrogate to deal with the loneliness of being on the island. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! Now I don't have Wilson with me today while filming unfortunately, but I'm going to look at making one of the other items that appeared in the film. In it, Chuck removes one of his teeth using the blade of an ice skate. And in a flash forward sequence to just before he's rescued, he ends up having an axe made from the ice skate that's been lashed with the laces. I'm going to look at doing the same thing. So I've gone out and purchased some ice skates. And I'm going to look at making a couple of different axe designs utilising the blade of the ice skate. Now, in the movie, yes, this is a VHS copy of said movie, the ice skate they use is a slightly older model than the one I've got here. You can tell that in several scenes, the way it's attached the blade to the shoe itself is with flat-headed screws, whereas mine has rivets, which are a lot more difficult to get off. However, in the flash forward to where he has an ice skate axe. Check over the whole island and that is all that's left. From the bulge of the cordage around the handle, I think what they've done is literally just take the shoe and the blade and attach them to a handle. So that's what we're going to be trying for the castaways version. But the first thing we've got to do is sharpen it. This is completely flat. There is no edge on this whatsoever. I can very safely just go across the top. Now the issue we have here is a simple one. It's reality versus the implied reality of the movie. Now, in several scenes, like the one where he takes his tooth out, you can see it's completely flat in the prop they use. Now, I've not been able to hunt down the prop master, so I don't know how they sharpened theirs. The implied reality of the movie is that in four years, he was able to grind it down to the point where it could stick into wood as an axe head. Now, I don't want to spend years grinding this down. And yes, you can grind down tools. You can reshape them on rough abrasive surfaces like sandstone, concrete, etc. But this is quite a sizable amount of stainless steel. Stainless steel can be difficult to sharpen by itself anyway. I'm not going to try and make the implied reality of the movie into what I'm going to be showing you in the actual reality. So, seeing as I've not been able to hunt down the prop master, I'm going to sharpen this the way I assume they sharpen theirs for the movie. Now after much, 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 much more grinding, this is what I've ended up with. Now, I'm more of a saw person than an axe person, so the actual angle that I've managed to grind onto it isn't the steepest angle in the world. It's still quite shallow, but hopefully the camera will pick up what I have done. So hopefully it's going to pick up that it is actually quite improved. So there we go. Now, we'll try and attach this to a handle and see how effective it is. But bear it in mind, this isn't an axe head. This is an ice skate. As such, there's no real weight to it. So, so it's going to be interesting to see how this actually works in reality.
So this is the stick I've ended up with. This is the side that I took off just using the ice skate and then I got bored and sawed off this side. Now all I'm going to do to attach to the ice skate is take advantage of that Y shape. I've been playing around a bit and I've discovered if I slot the ice skate like that it rests firm against the handle and it's quite secure. So all I'm going to do when it comes to actually lashing it is obviously that blade's going to be perpendicular to the actual handle and all I'm going to do is to use this little bit of space between the actual ice skate back and the handle to lash around the actual boot itself and then around this stick. So that's what we're going to do in lashing stick to the bottom of the boot essentially leaving the blade untouched to be used as our cutting tool. So, honesty time. I don't have any footage of me getting the cordage for this project. There's a really good reason for this. I didn't intend to get the cordage when I was getting it. It was a complete happy accident. Um, when I was out there filming the rocket stove video, which is the last one I put on the channel, the Dr. Larry Winiarski rocket stove video, I was snapping branches and picking up bits of wood to use as fuel, and as I snapped one branch, it sort of ran down the bark. I was like, oh, that's strange, so I sort of started pulling at it, and it kept pulling down the bark. And I was like, well, that's really good cordage. And I looked closely at this cambium layer, and all the fibres were vertical, and I'm like, well, this is this is cordage, this is brilliant. So I got my pen knife out and sort of stuck it into the tree, and almost like a wood plane was just taking down strips of this cordage and then pulling it off. Now I didn't know what that tree was. I wasn't expecting to find cordage, I was looking for firewood. And it was completely accidental that I didn't actually, you know, I didn't film it because I wasn't expecting to find cordage. But I could see the principles of that vertical cambium layer and I was able to tug on it and show the strength of it and I knew this is cordage. I knew from my bushcraft knowledge I can make cordage out of this. But I didn't know what a tree was. So I came back home, I did a bit of research, I had some pictures of the bark, I had a picture of the leaves, I did some Google searches, I asked a few people on some forums, and eventually we came to a conclusion. Now in the UK we call it a lime tree. In the America it's, it's, it's a American linden or basswood tree. So that's what I'm going to be using for cordage, this cambium layer from this complete accidental thing that happened out in the woods. What I'm doing is taking the uh, bark off this cambrium layer cordage. So I don't know how that well that's going to show on camera, but the fibres are all vertical, which means this cordage is really strong. So all I've done is soak the bark overnight, and now I'm just going to display how I've been taking off the actual bark off it. So here's a piece I'm working on at the minute. I'll just zoom you guys in a little bit. So we've got our cambium layer, but we've still got bark on it. So all I'm doing is snapping it, or snapping through the bark, creating a weak point. And then I'm using that weak point to peel off the bark. You see there how that's gone up on the edge? All I'm going to do is get my thumbnail in there, and then just peel down the bark. Hopefully I'll peel it off. So
So just use some twine to hold it in place just for camera purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the stick. So over the stick but under the blade. And pull through. And that's all I'm going to do. Just use that to go over the shoe and then just lash it to itself. Is that rescue plane ahead? Just gotta repeat that a few times. Who's breaking? Your what is breaking? Right, a couple of observations we get to this point. The main problem I've had with my ice skate axe is the bindings come loose. Now, if I was using paracord or some other kind of cordage, it won't be much of an issue because I've got more of it. I'm kind of limited on this uh, cordage I got from that tree. So, as I'm striking that pallet, you can see the cordage comes loose over the toes and as I'm in the woods striking that tree, all the impact force is just making the bindings go loose. So I'm left with a loose, floppy, facid boot just dangling about. Insert penis joke here. Now, I've also discovered a bit of a problem in my technique. Because I'm right-handed, when I go to strike you up with this axe, What's actually happening is the handle is getting in the way of the blade. So the actual cutting edge of the blade isn't being used to its full potential because just as the cutting blade comes into play, the handle takes the rest of the kinetic energy away. So I need to look at a different way of attaching my ice skate to my handle. But in its current state, it's essentially a force multiplier. It's great at taking dead branches off those trees. It's great at chopping down ferns to make roofing for a shelter. But as an actual axe against live wood, it's not particularly effective because that cutting edge isn't being utilized to its fullest potential. So I'm gonna look at trying to change that by changing my handle design. Right, honesty time. I've moved upstairs because the lighting's a bit better and I've got a washing machine running downstairs, which kind of kills my audio quality. And we're about a week later after that last clip you saw because my camera died. So I've had to go out and buy a brand new one. It would have been nice to be shilling new people for Patreon money so I didn't have to have that expense, but to continue the channel, I needed a new camera. And maybe I'll start promoting Patreon at some point, maybe next year, when I prove to myself I can keep to a schedule and I prove to you guys I can keep to a schedule and still deliver content you'd actually want to invest in. 
So, I'm not going to do any more work on the Castaways version of the ice skate axe because I still need it to look like this for title images and for a bit of a comparison later. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. I've highlighted a couple of the issues I've got with it, but overall it's better than nothing. You can see why in the movie Tom Hanks' character uses fire. So for the Spark Mistakes incarnation, I'm going to be looking at this. This is the second ice skate because ice skates usually come as a pair. And I've gone on the belt grinder. I didn't bother recording it because there's no point duplicating footage. I'm a bit of an offender for doing that. But this time I've gone really steep on one side, and really narrow on the other. I don't know how well that's gonna show up on camera, but maybe you can just about see what I mean. So really narrow on this left-hand side, but really quite steep on the other. So hopefully that'll be a better cutting blade. Now, the reason I've been inspired by Castaway to do it this way is because I can throw this into a backpack. Without a handle, it doesn't take up particularly much room and there's not very much weight to it. So, let's do this five mistakes incarnation of an ice skate axe. So, for the handle, what I'm working with is this sizable chunk of sycamore branch. All I've done is saw it off the tree and while it was still green, I've removed the bark it's got a few knots in it, but it's a nice length to use as a handle. It doesn't have that kind of short limitation of the Castaways version. So, how am I going to attach my ice skate head to this handle? In an ideal world, I'd love to weld rings at these three points, so I could just get any old stick and just slot it up the handle. Almost like a tomahawk, but with rounded rings, so that would be a bit easier I wouldn't have to do that specific tomahawk shape but I'm going to be using the holes that were left over from when it was how it was attached to the ice skate in the first place these are originally those rivets which I grinded off but now I've got quite useful attachment points so one of the things I could look at doing is take my handle I could batten a flat plane at the top and then have an area to attach these holes just with wood screws or something like that and I could have a handle that way but I don't particularly want to do that because the idea is to make this thing nice and easily and portable so let's look at a different way of utilizing these holes to attach the ice skate blade to a handle so because I'm not on a remote island I have access to something called cable ties which if I'm doing it within the confines of the movie is a bit cheating but I'm not on an island and all I've done is use those original holes and some cable ties. I've looped them in such a manner that they have these loops for the handle to go through. And all I've done is do it in sequence. So we've got terminating end on one side. And then the next one in line is the rear. Then terminating end again all the way down the length. Hopefully that makes sense. So all I've got to try and do is figure out where the camera is facing. And decide if I want this pointy section up or this knobbly section at the bottom. Well, seeing as I had on the Castaways version, I had this side as the uh, bottom. I think we'll change that around. So that's now the top. I've got my handle. And all I'm going to do is slide it up there. And then, using the cable ties, I'm just going to put them into the terminating end, which is a little bit fiddly on camera, so it might have to come back to me. So it's only been about a minute off camera and all I've done is take those cable ties, put them through the terminating ends and cinch them down as tight as I can with naked hands. The only reason I've not cleaned up these lengths is because I'm going to go over it in a minute with some pliers when I get a bit more purchase and just get the worst of them tied down a bit. But there we go. So let's take the Castaways ice skate axe head and my Survive Mistakes version which is the other ice skate turned into an axe. And let's go into the woods and just see how effective a small portable ice skate headed axe is that's inspired by the movie Castaway. Now, as I walk into the woods, I need to point out, obviously it doesn't need to be cable ties. It's just what I had lying around. Obviously I'm not limited by what I've got because yeah, I'm not on a desert island. I could have used adhesive tape, an epoxy of some kind, nails, cordage, 
loads of different options. But I thought I'd have to point it out to you guys, because if I didn't, someone would have said it in the comments. So, just before we test this axe, I want to take a second to introduce my uh, camera person. Now, they've been around in the background for a while, but today they're going to be rocking the uh, video recording glasses. So this is Wilson. You've got to excuse him, he's a little bit uh, quiet because he's on camera. Usually he's a bit more bouncy than that, but he's going to be uh, using the video recording glasses. See, there we go. Wilson knows how to play ball. I think I might have realised why you don't use cable ties on your ice skate axe. The actual force of the impact has sheared them all. So when you guys go out there and make your own ice skate axe, because I know you're going to do it, you've seen me, you've been inspired by Castaway, you want to make an ice skate axe, don't you? I can just, I can just tell. Anyway, that's all from me. So if you like the video, please like it on YouTube, let me know I'm doing a good job. And if you want to put a comment below the video just to anything you want to tell me by all means I check all the comments and if you really 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 liked it please consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to know what I'm up to in between videos I'm at Zoe Survival on Twitter and on Facebook we've got a Facebook group called Survival Mistakes where I chat to my fans and give you an idea what I'm doing in between videos and if you are one of my fans from Facebook thank you very much I appreciate all your engagement I've got some of the best fans in the world so there's only one way I can ever end a video and it's the most sincerest thing I can say from my heart to you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and get out there into the impossible every day. You got anything to say, Wilson? Alright, just stay with the silent treatment then.